Hello everybody and welcome back to Dawncaster. Today we're going to be playing one of my favorite builds, which is the Corrupted Arcanist. This is a, I think you could call it maybe a slightly cheesy build, or better said, a slightly apple build. Because our entire gameplay is going to revolve around smashing our opponents in the face with Forbidden Fruit. So this build revolves around the Eldritch Flame card. This is a triple blue energy card. That basically is two damage for each of your corruptions in your deck. And every time you cast it, adds Forbidden Fruit to your disco pile. Forbidden Fruit is a corruption. Uh, you can eat these fruits to gain life. But obviously if you eat them, you'll have fewer corruptions in your deck and do less damage. So what's tricky about this card is first of all, uh, you have to obtain it. You can't take it as a starting card. And that it costs three blue energy. So you do either need to find a way to make tons of energy or much better just make the card cost no energy. So our goal is kind of to make this card free, make it memorized and then copy it a bunch of times. So we have like four or five of them in our starting hand and then we can just one shot any enemy on the first turn. There are a few other corruption cards that are gonna be quite helpful here. Uh, Dark Inquiry and Drain Health will keep us alive while we're looking for Eldritch Flame and kind of building up our deck. Uh, if we find a Witness to Evil or Eldritch Grimoire, that's also quite helpful and sanguine casting is gonna be one of our starting cards that as long as eldritch uh apple card costs three energy and is the only card that costs three energy in your deck sanguine casting will always find it because it'll be the highest cost card in your deck so we can disable the infinitum and catalyst packages for this run uh heads up i'm using a seed for this so i know that we will find the apple card eventually i'm using the dark spires i'm using rotten weapon and i'm using sanguine casting we're playing on challenging uh this is a build that is totally viable for impossible there's just no guarantee it's always going to work so i'm going for a slightly lower difficulty just to have a higher chance of this working um seated run yep let's get ourselves a good name too Neil the cheat. I guess this build kind of feels like cheating. Well, once you get it up and running, I'm sure that's how the opponents feel at the very least. I love the music in this level. Hit our opportunities first. Or they hit us, I guess. Uh, nah. No need to repair it. Go straight for the uh, mini boss here. So before we find the Eldritch Flame, we're kind of just playing a pretty generic attacking build. We need to get a few Malignances into our deck, which will happen automatically anyhow when we play our Dark Spires. Um, so I mean, I haven't really explained how these work. This is our basic attack, deals two damage, repeat that for each corruption in your hand. And if you trigger its flow state, you add a Malignance. And a malignance is a corruption that when you draw it, it deals two damage and you gain an anger. So you're kind of playing, you're trying to add a few malignances to your decks. So your dark spires can do enough damage to get you to the point where um, you can just kill the opponents. Because at the moment, as you can see, they're doing basically nothing. So we need to draw a few malignances, take a bit of damage, and then cast dark spires in our hand with the malignancies. This is a build that kind of has a lot of big health swings, especially in the start of the game. It's a bit risky to play, and there are definitely some opponents in the game where if you're really unlucky, they can just lock you out. So this is a build that really suffers to when you're pinned. Because um, imagine you have a bunch of malignances in your deck and like you have two dark spires in the center of your hand and then a malignance to the left and to the right, and you're pinned, so you can't play either one of them. You just get absolutely wrecked. It feels so bad. Um, so the uh, the dog mini boss from spec the mole kitten. I'll heal it. I'll give it one of my dark spires, and I'll take this ring of power. Um. So yeah, really bad, really bad with pinned. It can also happen that you just draw like five malignances and just have to pass your turn. 
Um, so like even here, like we didn't get a single Dark Spire. And then as time goes on, you're overall gonna want to be sort of replacing those malignances with uh, the forbidden fruit, which is something you can work on as you go. Transform a card, transform a block. Sure, put a sharpening stone, use that on a dark spire. And your weapon power basically heals, heals you for twice the amount of corruptions you have in your deck and it also removes one of them. Does this music remind anyone else of uh, StarCraft? It's kind of got that sci-fi cowboy vibe. So the, the ring is kind of an interesting item. I think it's way better in Sunforge than it is in the campaign, because in Sunforge, you're kind of... Um, randomly upgrading tons of cards anyhow, and so it just gets upgraded along with everything else. Um, but I find here really spending your time upgrading it at the expense of other cards that are probably a bit more useful. Um, I don't know, not that amazing. If you happen to get tons of gold, you can trigger it like many, many times. I think it's pretty okay. But its main uses are that the freezing and the frost mode they burn through your opponent's wards so someone like dante who starts with like uh more and more wards depending how difficult you're playing on um it can be really good against so like if you get it to pop three times you can just remove all of his ward and then hit him with the stuff you actually want to hit him with So our caravan still got a decent 67. I should be able to kill him here. Yeah, nice. Uh, not Gravecaster. Not Epiphany. Not Conjurer. Not Magical Ornaments. Uh, I think Weapon Training is overall going to give us the most amount of health. Uh, let's just get a Mecha Kinpin. Very good pun, very good. So you see, this is what can happen. You just draw five malignances. You do get five anger, so we'll be good down the line, but the problem is now we're probably gonna draw a lot of dark spires without many corrupted actions in our hand. Um, so yeah. That worked out pretty well actually because of the ring doing those extra 11 damage. Damn. Okay, all right. <laughs> no Dark Spire again. Uh, drain health. Very good, very good. Uh, I'm actually going to visit one of these campsites before we fight him. I'm going to visit two of them before we fight him. Yeah, when you're playing on challenging, you get a decent amount of campsites. You lose one campsite per difficulty level, I believe. Except for the Vesperian Mansion, I think you always have the full amount. Whoa, okay. Our bad malignants like earlier kind of turning around and coming clutch for us. Oh yeah, okay, that was a miss by my end. Um, this guy has his defensive ability, this thing, Burrow. So you need to play two actions before you actually start doing any real damage to him. So now, there you go. Yeah, I could have killed him a turn earlier. Uh, Dark Inquiry, beautiful. That'll help us dig towards cards that we need and sustain us a little bit. Uh, Eldritch Flame, we'll definitely buy. Drain Health, we'll definitely buy. There's an argument here for Conduit as well, but not really. Just trolling. Okay, first Canto. We got our Eldritch Flame at the very end there. Um, what do we want to do here? Uh, let's do the story thing. Blacksmith. I guess we'll just start upgrading our one Eldritch Flame. Activate that. Is there any point doing anything with the Alchemist? We could get rid of the 
block, but no, there's no real point. Uh, we're just going to run it down the core levels for now. I think later on we might get a little bit spicy if our, if our one shotting's going well. There are some levels we can look at later in the game. So what we want to do here is... Okay, that is what we wanted to avoid, actually, is fighting Daisy before we got the stun. So in the woods, you can make the choice whether or what you want to have the merchant going forward or the count and because we're a build that is sort of relying on a single card that we're just playing over and over we want the count because he has the power to duplicate our cards so if we finally get a eldritch flame that's like memorized and, and free or cheaper um boom we can use that to we can use the count to copy it so we just get like tons of them right okay here's the pin fingers crossed no malignancies left and right damn we're actually we're actually doing pretty hot with these i gotta say um we have not been malignancy locked uh if i do if i do this i actually don't even think he dies here Nope, that is rather unfortunate. Okay, we're going to get pinned one more time. Hopefully, this is the last one. Okay, we kind of have to eat this apple. Oh, we don't have triple green. See, yeah, this is what can happen. Now we're taking lots of unnecessary damage. But we're going to get him now. Anyhow, we definitely took a lot more damage there then I feel like we really needed to. Oh, but we do have a copy shrine there I just saw. That's going to come in handy later. Um, I'll give you one of my dark spires. Uh, talking tree, this is what we want. So we're going to check the man's boots and then we're going to leave him there. So this is going to apply kind of a debuff to all of our opponents here. Uh, yeah. That will stun them for the first turn. Ah, oh, great. Okay. Uh, well, we could have just gotten rid of the block here instead. Do we remove a card? I guess so. Don't really want to be pinned by the bear trap. So, Crimson Stalker, instead of having first strike, is now stunned. Very good. So I think we just needed the health there. The Eldritch thing would have already done a lot more damage, but I think we're looking a little bit sketchy on our life total after that, after that fight. Um, yeah, and then with this we won't draw that because it's in our graveyard, but it will get us. Nah, I'd rather see what we get from here. I think I'd rather YOLO than get one more Dark Spire. Damn, see, there's that bad luck again. If we got gotten one Spire there, imagine we could have just killed the opponent. Yeah, see. Oh, another Dark Inquiry, not bad. Okay, this is very handy right now. Um, blacksmith. Yeah, you might as well go to the blacksmith when your weapon power is at the its highest point of cooldown, because he instantly refreshes it. Okay, now we just take all the enemies out one by one, and hope that our next level up gives up some kind of really good talent. Oh, this is pretty good actually. A lot of healing here. Uh, I'm actually just gonna sing one cast. And do that. Do that. So we currently do not actually, I just noticed we don't actually have the scholar condition met for that card yet. I think we're just one or two corruption shy. So scholars, if you have 20 more cards in your deck, but we should be able to do that here pretty soon. Yeah. Not taking Bio Blast. Yeah, we're exactly 20 now. 
Okay, so we have that copy card. If we can make this Eldritch Flame cost zero, we're we're doing it. We're doing the thing. Very nice. So that was a round where we exited with uh, more health than we came into. Uh, duplicity is interesting. Uh, definitely not devotion. Inoculation, eh. Okay, now so Spell Fury. This is a perfect card for, sorry, a perfect talent for the Elders thing, because basically when we play our first one, we get a free second copy. So once we memorize it, we'll essentially always have two of them in our starting hand. But we really need to get around to playing more of them. So we need to start, see there's the second one now. now I'm just gonna play this first. Because I think, is that a net gain in health? I don't know. Again, if you can, always top up on health via abilities before killing an opponent. If you know the opponent well enough, you can also just hold an ability. Um, sorry, if you know what they're going to do. You can just pass a turn to get some more like rally or regenerate or something and then kill them the turn after. Wow, ouch. Now we're gonna get hit twice as well. Ouch, ouch. So first gonna do that, then kill him. Uh, blood magic, yeah. I mean, not necessary, but it's iconic. Blood magic basically turns all the energy costs in our deck into uh, blood until we play them once. Can be pretty good at reducing the cost on the Eldritch uh, Flames if you haven't found any other way to play them. Okay, one more turn. To kill this guy before he does 20 damage to us. Uh, very good. Uh, I'll take another drain health. Bandit camp. Charge in. So we have the pieces for the combo. We really just need some way to memorize it. We're also not level three yet, so we don't have enough energy out of hand to play the Eldritch Flame, even if we naturally draw it, like right there. We're only generating two blue a turn. So definitely a bit of a downside. Uh, drain health. Why not take malignance, get some more anger. Do some damage here. Still one shy, one hit shy. Boom. Get those apples in the deck, bro. Anything we really want to transmute here. We could turn a malignance into a sanguine scrying. That's an option. Why not? Help us draw through the deck. Things are good. Things are going downhill. So the reason you might want a lot of draw cards in this deck is let's say you're fighting an opponent later. Where uh, you don't manage to kill them turn one, and then you kind of need to dig through the deck to find another Eldritch Flame. That's sort of where you'd want that. All these draw effects. So there's also a card that lets you just pick any one card in your deck and put it in your hand. If we can get any copies of that, that is also really, really, really good in case you don't get like that turn one kill. Because the thing is, if you're like preloading your entire starting hand, right, you have like five... Um, five of the Eldritch Flames or something. But then you don't have anything else in your deck that actually does anything. And you don't manage to kill the opponent on turn one. 
then you're sort of like, oh, siphon magic. I'll take that. You're sort of just left with a deck of apples. Um, which is, doesn't really do anything. Uh, we'll take ill-gotten gains. So let's rest. Let's rest. And let's rest again. So we unfortunately didn't manage to make the Eldritch Flame free. However, I'm still kind of tempted to copy it just so there's another copy floating around in our deck. Yeah, if it were free and or memorized, that would be a great starting point, but alas. This will still help us grow our apple, our orchard. Okay, so this is a really important part here. We didn't recruit the merchant, but you still need to go recruit the other guy. You do that by going to the inn, walking up to the bar, talking to the guy, and then sounds like a plan and he'll join you. And now you can pay him 100 gold going forward to copy cards. So again, these Eldritch Flames aren't really where they're supposed to be yet, so I'm not going to copy one yet. You can even check it on the merchant, but it's empty. Nowhere to be found because we abandoned him. Uh, I'll just upgrade one of these. Leave the area. And run it down the Noxlight Swamp. So this area can be kind of rough. Uh, until we finally manage to memorize one of these damn things. Especially because there's so much poison. And we do quite a lot of damage to ourselves. And then there's the poison. It can add up quite quickly. So you really need to watch out here. I'll play this for sure. So we'll need to remove that greed from our deck sooner or later. Okay, blood magic. Well, if I play this, I'll get the other Eldritch. Yeah, we can get that one for free. Nice. Uh, remove the greed. Yes, yeah, so you can also remove corruptions that got added to your deck in any way with this. It's not just the ones you put in. Okay, we're about to take a lot of damage. Ouch. Yeah, see, this looks very different. If you get to go, if you get to go first with the, uh, uh, we just go straight for greater intellects. Take no dark and green. So if you get to play your big damaging spell before those froggy guys hit you, uh, join the game. Definitely the hangman. So the wheel is the better choice in the moment, but hangman gets you Troven's blessing, which is way better in the long run. Um, Troven's blessing just heals you whenever you gain gold. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so those froggies deal damage to you based on their maximum health. So if you can, oh shit up like that um if you manage to do a lot of damage to them before they do that obviously it's not gonna hit as hard but unfortunately there we basically just tickled the guy um which i can't say was very impressive nice take another siphon magic i mean why not Uh, should we take a random rare? I'll buy a random rare. Wow. Oh. That wasn't very good. Let's offer it to this guy. Where'd it go? Oh, those are also all kind of useless. But, I mean, I'm gonna be honest. Like, what were we expecting? An upgrade, the one that already has the most upgrades. And I'll remove another malignance. Ooh, double over two we're losing one. Babbling book, give me something good. Sacred shield, I mean. It's a playable, it's a playable. I'm gonna get that greed out of here again. Uh, sloth and transmute it into another sanguine scrying just so we have more draw power. You know, the sacred shield's actually not too bad. It's not too bad actually, because if we have rounds like this where we just don't draw any, any action, we can pass and it'll absorb the first hit. So I can't really hate. Wow, now we're actually drawing a lot of corruptions with no action. So we should be drawing an absolute boss hand next, right? That's my assumption. 
I call that boss hand. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, I did actually do a little oopsie there between those Sanguine Scryings in the deck. Because they also cost three energy. It's not three energy energy, it's like three blood energy. So when we play... Uh, when we play that other card, it's obviously also looking for them. Damn, I did not really think about that when I put it in. Now I'm debating whether it's worth trying to remove them again. I guess we'll see. Yeah, until you get these Eldritch things memorized, a lot of this is just heavily luck-based. Uh, Dark Cree. I guess Ring of Power. No, we don't actually want to add one of these. So these ethereal enemies, if you can't kill them and you don't have brain pain, just like don't have to play anything, you know? It's fine to just not. Get rid of another malignance. Wandering slime. Pretty spooky. Um, I actually don't want to go to any of these guys because I'm hoping I can use the illusionist later. I really want to keep that campfire later. I mean, do we just remove these sanguine scryings? <sighs> I feel like I really, really, really wasn't thinking clearly when I put those in. Okay. Learn from my mistakes. I'm going to fight the slime guy last. If at all. He's definitely one of those bosses where it's like, you know what? I'm good, actually. I'm just not going to fight him. Which, by the way, totally legitimate strategy. If there's just an opponent who's too strong. Just dodge. Not every build can defeat every opponent, by the way. Like, don't be surprised if you just get wrecked by something out of left field. And you... Uh, counter again on a later run. Like, don't feel bad about just skipping it. You know, live to fight another day. You don't need every point of experience on the on the battlefield, you know? Take Dispel Magic. I mean, we've got a lot of Dispel stuff at that point. Yeah, why not? If we're going to try and fight... Dante, Rathel, whatever. It could be actually quite handy to have. That's a pretty good one shot. Oh, the Eldritch Grimoire. Yes, we're definitely taking that because that gives us more sustain. And it's also quite easy damage, to be honest. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Here we go, here we go. So we can swap the energy cost of two cards. And we're going to take the most upgraded Eldritch Flame. This one's plus four. You can see that at the top of the screen. And a random apple. Ta-da! So now we have an apple that costs three gold. And an Eldritch Flame that costs nothing. Oh, that's even asking us if we want to remove it. But I'd rather get rid of the Bling Lens. And now, even though it's not memorized yet, I'm just going to go ahead and copy it. Again, just to get that, that copy floating around. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good on this. So this seed, I mean, this is a seed where I know that I won with it once. Um, it's been a while since I played it though. So I don't really remember exactly what appears where. Sanguine Scrying, my old friend. You're trolling, you're trolling. Okay, Eldritch Grimoire. Um, let's just try and burn them. Not bad. Yeah, see, there's the Sanguine's crying. Brutal. So that should have fetched the other Eldritch Flame that still costs three. But it didn't because of... Because of my my choices earlier let's add another elder flame to the deck so you know what just keep on adding them um because again you don't want all of them in your starting hand to be honest it's nice to just have some of them floating around
That was pretty easy. Arcane warding. Nah. Uh, lower stuff lore joins our party. Okay, we really need to find some kind of way to make those things memorized. Like at the moment, the opponents aren't so scary that we can't just uh, play for a while and like tank a few hits. Okay, uh, strategist, probably not. Thunder Slakes, no. Firebrand, no. Alchemist, no. Uh, Diamond Mind is good against, like, exactly Serena. We just keep on drawing cards, don't we? That's, like, the best way to do it. Okay. I'm gonna go attack this Wandering Slime and just really, really hope that I don't need a safe scum, that I don't regret this. This guy can be so brutal if things go wrong. But they didn't. Wow, okay. Sure. I mean, why the hell not? You know what, let me get rid of uh, some of these. I feel like strictly speaking, this is actually incorrect to remove them. Actually, let's get rid of the Sanguine Scrying. That's the thing that was annoying us, wasn't it? Uh, we're going to go to... Yeah, let's do Amber Mine so we can recruit the Succubus. Maybe get some free talents off of her. So I think at this point, we should just be one-shotting most opponents. Look away. Oh, we got the statue. That's pretty funny. Uh, offer a card. I know, does an apple upgrade something? Wow, it does. Oh, okay, this is a bit wasted on us right now. We can cook a meal, for an extra meal, eat the meal, and then we get some gold. Let's go straight for the mini boss. Okay. Wow, 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 wow. We're really trying to steal this guy's breakfast, aren't we? Oh, we should have done this first to get the one extra anger. Damn. Oh, very nice. So that idol actually has a little bit of like sneaky synergy with our deck. Oh, we're definitely taking the gold here. Um, in the sense that uh, swap upgrades, is that useful to us? I don't think so. Let's swap a Dark Spire upgrade onto an Eldritch Flame. I'm gonna swap a Dark Spire onto a Ring of Power. There you go. Um, lost my train of thought there. Oh yeah, the the delirious from the um, from the idol. So the delirious basically means that the energy costs of the cards in your hand swap around randomly, and so for the most part, our cards don't cost any energy whatsoever, and that means that we can maybe get an eldritch flame to make itself free if it's not one that we've already made cheap. More and more apples. Oh yeah, let's deal. Let's deal. What you got? What you got? Okay. I mean, none of these are amazing, but Master of Forms, I guess, is not unplayable. That be considered a compliment? This is actually going to be, I think this is actually going to be pretty good later once we have um, the memorized free ones in our hands. Until then, I think it's a little bit scuffed. Because we're just sort of incentivized to run down damage here, but you know what? 
So how does this work? This is uh, your next damage is critical hit. I'm actually gonna, I'm actually just gonna go into this form and channel it. That critical hit could come in handy and the haste is actually also really good. Um, well, obviously not very good there. Do also dodge a melee action with the evasion. All right, that's actually pretty good. Oh, an upgraded ring of power. Yeah, I'll take that. Oh, I had a greed in here somewhere, didn't I? Um, go straight to the blacksmith, upgrade. Which one's upgradable? They're both fours. Do I actually have any enchantments in this deck so far? I don't feel like we do. Yeah, we can pick up an enchantment sooner or later, just get something imbued. There is an enchantment that basically does the same thing as Spell Fury. If we could get that and imbue that, we would be... We would be living it up. Hmm. Nope. Gotta get our mouth guard later. That's what being an adult's all about. Proper dental hygiene. <laughs> so I think this is turn one kill. Yeah, see, that's what we're looking for. The one TK. Come on. Just need some way to memorize it. God, it's beautiful when it works. Uh, no, no, no. War priest, interesting. Ah, so I'm just gonna have to do forgery without having a memorized one. I gotta say, this seed isn't as good as I thought it would be. I would assume by now we would have gotten an opportunity to memorize one of these. I feel like we're just kind of messing around. Um, just playing this build pretty fairly. You know what? This is this is the fair version of the build. Let's let, let's put it, let's say that we're just an honest honest player. You know what? That crit is actually really damn good. What actually happens if you transmute? Siphon magic. That's not bad. It's not amazing. It's not bad. Yeah, so we definitely don't want to recruit the Priestess. So when you recruit the Priestess, she gives you this talent uh, that kind of just burns away all of the uh, the corrupted actions in your deck. And considering you're a corrupted deck, uh, that will pretty much just end your, right then and, uh, your run then and there. It's not possible to recover from, to be fair. I've, I've actually done it before and, 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 you know, lived to tell the tale. But if you can avoid it, avoid it. You know what I mean? Right, we're in haste like it's no one's business. But all we really need is an apple, an apple card. I mean, not literally apples, but... Oh, I'm not sure if I read this one. It's haste naturally outside of a... Outside of a blessing build. There we go. Get appled. 
Uh, yeah, why not just take another one? Pre-upgrade it. Yes. Wow. Uh, we can go the right, take a piece of amber, put it in our pocket, go forward, try to push through, remove some extra weight, break some gold free. Oh, wow. Still no memorized. Still no memorized options. This is quite annoying as well, isn't it? At least it's going to be hard for her to get a Beguile on us because her deck is so thick. If we could swap into a beast form though, what we could do... Uh, this cleanses at the end of turn. Whenever you discard a card, cleanse an affliction, but you don't get the dominate until the beginning of your turn. Uh, I'm just going to take this. Hopefully we should be able to kill her with whatever we draw next turn. Hmm. Yeah, this is really eating a lot of our apples. It's actually quite annoying. Come on, can I just take a malignance? Okay, well we got burning on her. That'll eventually kill her if nothing else does. Come on. Okay, there it is. There it is. There's just stop eating goddamn apples. Okay. So we probably got rid of like seven or eight apples there. Which kinda really sucks. Okay, so we will imbue that. And while you're here, we might as well. I mean, there's kinda no point not doing it. So, this is where I was going to kind of say, let's go to the Godscar Waste. But the thing is, if we can't get that thing to be memorized, the Godscar Wastes are really, really risky. Um, but you can't step down the face of danger, you know? Uh, what do they offer us again? Teresa, she can brew you a potion. Yeah, make me the potion. Blood Moon, great. So, okay. <laughs> well, got pretty lucky there. So the thing is with this level is that you don't really want to stick into any... You don't want to stay in any given fight for very long because the opponents, they... Uh, drain away your maximum health over time and it stacks between fights so you might eventually just end up with like five maximum health and then obviously you're gonna die okay we're getting very lucky with these uh these eldritch guys the eldritch flames opportunity that is definitely a mimic but we can take this fight nowhere we don't find Eldritch Flame in like four turns, right? Right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, not quick crafting. <sighs> Weapon training? No. No. No enchantments. God. Uh... <sighs> Is, that this, is this a magic action? Magic basic attack? I mean, I'll take Sharp Mind. Oh, here's the Collector. Yeah, well, we lost the other thing before. Sorry about that. Um, because it got expunged. The statue got expunged from our deck. Because it's a holy card. Or divine card. If I can give him the weaker one of the rings. Eh. Magic Aptitude doesn't do too much. But you know what, it's better than nothing. So the risk is with these, uh... 
if you're taking random talents, they can give you the divine talent that just ends up uh, removing all the corrupted actions from your deck. The reverse thing can happen too. You get like the corrupted talent when you have the you're playing some kind of a divine build. It's kind of funny if it happens though. I uh, give her the bandits. Yeah, Stormbringer. Uh, that is for a chain build. I mean, that being said, it will add seven points of damage to our first Eldritch thing. So it's not like it's bad. Sanguine Shrine. I mean, 10 maximum health. Ugh, do we want to? Just to make another Eldritch Flame cheaper? Not really. So these fights have actually been going pretty quickly. We have been drawing the Eldritch Flames very reliably, probably because just we have we just have so many in the deck now. Um Yeah, because we just have so damn many of them in the deck now that this is actually quite doable. But yeah, there we go. See, we whiffed, so it can still happen. But we'll go for the crit. There we go. Prevented all the reaping with her evasion. That beast from crit's actually pretty damn good. I was underestimating that. Bear trap, you can take a malignance, have fun with that. The bear trap's so devastating, because again, that, that gives you the pin status for three turns. And pinned is so good against you. Come on. There it is, Bob. Oh, Clarity. So this is the draw any card. So if we draw this, we can just draw whatever we need. Uh, that card is basically, if you play magic, it's a, a demonic tutor. Investigate, continue, continue. So this could also make something free. Yeah? Um, You know what, I'll actually do it this time. So one of these had a bunch of upgrades, right? Cause we picked it up from the fire dude. This one, plus seven. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll do you. I'll go here, I'll rest. Do that. And then I'm actually not going to drain health because that would burn our Spell Fury talent because we want to actually keep that for the, the applesauce. God damn it. Okay, we're actually not finding it this time, are we? Uh, yeah, this is the scary thing that can happen. We are going to avoid our opponent's next attack, so we're not going to get hit by anything reaping-wise for a while. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do this. Doesn't matter anymore. I think we just need to kill him. Yeah, we're also gonna get doomed out or something. There we go. Yeah, so you know, the more, the more times you cast it, right, the less likely it is you'll find them. You go inside. Uh, you know what? I don't come to the zone enough to know what each of these do off the top of my head. Go to the library. That sounds like something you're supposed to do as a magician, right? Oh, that just releases anima? Oh, okay. I thought that might do something else. You're going to have to look up what each one of those do. I don't come to the Godscar Waste very often. This is not my hood. Grimoire. No, we just need to keep on looking for. Just to keep on digging. Digging, you heard me. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Okay. 
Ouch. Here they all are. There you go. All you need to do is find them and then you win. Okay, Infernal Contract. This is actually a really funny card. Um, so unless you're corrupted, it just kills you. But otherwise it's just three life for three cards. So, oh my god, guys, I've just been having the biggest brain fart of all time this entire run. The Enchanter can memorize cards. Uh, let's just pretend I didn't forget that for the last half hour. Um, should we try and go for Rathdale? Seems pretty stupid. Let's try. So his henchmen shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. But Rathdale himself is obviously uh, pretty damn tricky. So I mean, what we can do now is we don't even need to copy the card, right? We can just memorize some of the other... This one's already memorized uh, some of the other ones here. My God, do I feel stupid. Okay, so learn from my mistakes, yeah. Oh, it was always supposed to be this easy. I swear I just haven't memorized a card with the enchanter in ages. Ah, uh, okay, so Purity, normally one of the best cards in the game because it removes all corruptions, uh, sorry, cleanses afflictions. But if we take this, it'll just remove half our deck, more than half our deck. So I'm just gonna roll that away so we don't actually click on it. Uh, RK Mastery would have been good a long time ago, but not now. Duplicity would have been good a long time ago, not now. That neither. I have to take Steel Mind. I don't think any of those were actually very good. I think that's probably the last level up we're going to get. That was not very impressive. Take Clarity. A lot of apples. Crip Brood Mother. Now, this one could be a little bit tricky depending how many eggs she manages to hold up at any one given time. Yeah, so see, we didn't get to kill her there. That being said, even if she puts Spiderlings into our deck. Yeah, damn, this could actually be kind of tricky. Um, because it's going to be very hard for us to hit her multiple times in one go. So I'm trying to think. I guess the Dark Sphere would hit her a few times in a row, right? If we had... Yeah, and now if we had... Okay, so is that kind of what we need to do? Damn, it's a lot of healing. Hmm, if we managed to burn her there, this would have been a lot easier. So we need to hit her with like a dark spire to get rid of the eggs and then hit her with an eldritch flame. 
Damn, okay, now we're starting to draw her spiders. Does this actually work differently on the um the lower difficulties? That the uh the spiders you draw don't add an egg to her count. I didn't know that. Okay. Wow. Okay. I mean, I'm going to put that down to luck that we just drew all of those at once. I'm not going to say no to it either. Oh, you don't really get much gold out of this usually, do you? Oh, that's fine. Hmm. Wow, very hard. Do not, do not drink the water at the Font of Purity. Again, removes all corruptions. Uh, arachnid Progenitor. It's a bit risky, isn't it? I want to first copy a card. How surprising, huh? Copy one of these memorized ones. So we have three in our starting hand. Uh, I mean, it's de facto four because we get the one free copy, right? So that's the fourth one. Arachnid progenitor, immune to dazed. No, we can get something better here. Um, what does this one do again? Immune to poison. This guy does poison. So he's immune to our attacks right now, isn't he? Yeah, this is what's going to make this very annoying. So if we don't find a way to do any damage to him on the turn he does that ability, we might be in deep shit. That being said, getting rid of the infect, it's pretty easy because we can just always eat an apple. Okay, just about okay there. We get to dodge one of those anyhow. We're immune to poisons, so that's not the end of the world. And now he's back up in his wall, isn't he? Yeah. Um, just need to dispel the infected. We'll do that again. Uh, okay, that's not very good. I just need to eat these just to kind of stay alive, I think. Okay, okay. So I'll eat a forbidden fruit to dispel that. I'll draw three. I mean, he's just gonna do his ultimate ability, so there's no incentive for me to hear to, to eat any of these. He'll just do that. And now I just really, really, really need to help I draw something good. Oh my God, this is so awkward. I think I'm I should have probably been playing this for a bit more damage.
Yeah, he's back up on his freaking wall, isn't he? You know what? I don't know. I feel like I'm just like ping ponging between these two. What's well, the right thing to do, huh? This is very tense. I just have fewer and fewer apples in my deck the longer this goes, which is going to make the fight against Raphael really, really difficult. So we can get anything in our deck. Um... Is this still apply frozen? Oh, it's only frozen to damage dealt. That's actually really annoying. I need to eat one of these to stop the infect. Come on. Oh my god. There we go. Jesus. That was getting pretty scary there. Whew. We were definitely one bad play away from dying. We had to eat a lot of apples. Let's uh, upgrade one of these memorized ones. Now we can go with the ferryman. Have your coins. Okay. This is the big fight against Rathil. So usually what I would hope that happens here is we basically knock him down to get his shield out and then we can like steal the shield with one of our kind of siphoning cards. How realistic that really is though, I do not know. Um, so is there one of these beast forms that's actually best, or should we just hit him with another Eldritch Flame? So I feel like we're not getting through that bear either way. We need to steal it if we're going to do anything. Um, let's just do the form of the cat. Uh, no longer gain blessings. Cards you play are buried. That's fine. So, I mean, we can dispel all of his blessings. Which I would say is pretty damn good. Now we just need to pick wisely here. Can no longer gain health. Okay, that's fine. Oh my god, if we just draw. Oh my god, this is so stupid. Okay. Um, no longer gain blessings. That's fine. If I literally just draw the apple thing, we're fine. If I don't... We kind of die. Oh my fucking god. <sighs> um, damage you deal is reduced by half. We are critting. I guess that kind of cancels out. Oh my god. Come on. Oh my god, is this it? Oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, take that. Take that. Oh, and we got Collector. Oh my god. So Collector is so good because says whenever you add a card to your deck, you gain five life and five gold. Whenever you play the Eldritch thing and you add an apple to your deck, it triggers. I mean, none of this matters right now, does it? It's just kind of fun. Because uh, we're not facing the spine anyhow because we're not at the higher difficulties. Oh my god, that was close. And we didn't even have to save Scum. How about that? So, I hope you guys liked this run. I hope you guys saw what the Arkness was all about. I hope you guys remember that the... Uh, <laughs> the Enchanter can memorize cards a few cantos before I did. And I hope you just have a great time playing Doncaster. Uh, leave me a comment below what kind of class you'd like to see next, what kind of build, and see if I can get to it, yeah? Have a nice evening, guys. Bye.